Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are doing part three of my story. As you know, we've talked about her first two surgeries, her cleft lip being fixed with a lip adhesion in surgery one and her definitive lip surgery in surgery two. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna talk about her third surgery, which was Gosh, your, me. I don't know, <laughs> which was the closure of her palate. So one thing that you have to understand is leading up to the surgery, lots of things had to happen in order for this to work. One of the big things, which was probably one of the hardest things for me, was she could not be using a bottle or using a sippy cup after this surgery. And so she had to learn to drink from a cup like before she was a year old because her surgery was actually scheduled just a few weeks after she turned a year old. I folded, let's say I just, I couldn't handle trying to get her to drink, but luckily her dad had more patience and he um, also had some background on how he wanted to go about doing this. So he had this and it's, if I'm even getting this right, um, it's a nosy cup. Mm -hmm. And um, he would sit her on the couch and he would put her in one arm mm -hmm. and he would get her to drink. Mm -hmm. And it she would scream <laughs> and scream and scream and scream and scream because it wasn't the bottle or, you know, um, she'd been kind of using sippy cups. But the problem with the sippy cup is we'd have to take the valve out of them. And so basically it wasn't a sippy cup anymore. If she dumped, if it fell over, it dumped everywhere anyway. But it was just a cup with a closed lid, basically. She definitely uh, was not ready or didn't want to do that. But luckily with the patience of her dad, she um, did learn to drink out of a cup before that surgery, which I'm glad it was him doing it because <laughs> I gave up. I'm like, I can't listen to her cry. <laughs> it makes me sad. Mm -hmm. But no, he, he did that. And so that was a plus because the reason why you can't have a baby or a child with a cleft palate drinking from a bottle or sippy cup is because after surgery, wow, mm. there's a lot going on in that mouth and it's super tender and mm. it's got stitches and it's just, it's painful. And so if you use a bottle or a sippy cup, it will damage the work that they've spent um, fixing it. So mm. it was huge to make sure that the um, goal of having her to drink from a cup was accomplished before surgery. Prior to surgery, also, you know, we met with her surgeon and um, he was leery on this surgery because with it being Aubrey, we've already kind of talked about her and her uh, uniqueness. He was straight up with us and he, and I was our same surgeon, Dr. Kane. He basically said her cleft is wider than most clefts are. So meaning... I'm not sure if we're going to have enough tissue inside her mouth to fix it. Okay. And he was very optimistic though. He's like, but you know what? We're going to go in. We're going to fix it. We're going to do what we can. But that was a big concern because he wasn't the first doctor to tell us that. Um, even her um, pediatrician at the time had even told us that it was one of the bigger clefts that she had ever seen as well. So we knew that it was going to be a challenge before we even went into her surgery. She went into surgery. Um, I believe it was another three hour surgery. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was three hours. Mm -hmm. The beginning ones were shorter. This time with her being a little older, she got to take a friend with her. Elmo. Elmo was her thing. And as you can see, they made sure that Elmo got um, his own um, tag so that they knew for sure that Elmo went back with her after surgery. But she definitely was um, bigger and kind of knew a little bit more, but you know, still being only a one year old, didn't exactly know everything. So with this surgery, when she came out, she was wearing these. <laughs> a lot bigger than her first two surgeries and also having the extra strap with them. The way these worked is that strap went around her back to kind of help make sure that fingers and nothing was going up in 
her mouth after surgery. Well, the other thing with the surgery is she was really kind of gorked out from mm -hmm. the medicine she was on after surgery. And um, we had to hold her upright all night after surgery because of all the drainage that was still happening from surgery. So we would have, you know, like towels and stuff on our shoulders and we would take turns holding her because we couldn't lay her flat. And she'd have those little arm braces on and she's so she's like leaning up against us, but she looked miserable. Mm -hmm. She was you could tell it would hurt. It would hurt a lot more than the other ones. I remember, you know, the when the surgeon came in to talk to us, um, he did tell us that he was excited that there was enough tissue in her mouth to close it. He was super excited for that. He was like, I we did it, no worries there. And when we got to see it. Oh my goodness, it was, it looked so painful, mm -hmm. so, so painful. You know what, these babies bounce back. They are, they are super duper troopers, I'll give you that. And she definitely did not let this one hold her back. She was only overnight again, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we brought her home and we still were like, ooh, but cause it looks so painful. But she had to drink so much before they would let her leave anyway. So that's why drinking from a cup was so important. You know, we got home and got going back to our regular routine. And she was able to start slowly eating those soft foods, you know, like applesauce and things like that. The one thing that they said <laughs> probably wouldn't happen, happened. Yep. Do you remember what happened? No. All the stories we've told you, you don't remember what happened? No. I don't. About a week and a half or so after surgery, her palate reopened. I don't remember anything. Of course you're not going to remember it. I was freaking out. I can tell you that. I had her in her high chair. She was having some applesauce. And I knew instantly that it had opened because applesauce came out her nose and I went oh my gosh no um so of course I called the surgeon's office and bless her heart his nurse was like oh it's okay that sometimes happens and I'm like mm, I don't think so um and after this particular surgery the actual surgeon gave me his cell phone number so I called him directly <laughs> And I talked to him. He'd actually had been in a surgery, um, but he called me back and I told him what was going on. And he's like, lay her on the floor and use a flashlight and look at the palette and tell me what you see. And we lay her on the floor and, you know, she opens up her mouth and you can see it. And sure enough, there was a hole. And when I described it to him, it was about the size of a pencil eraser, you know, the little eraser on the top of a pencil. Exactly. Um, it was round and just the size of a pencil eraser. And I was devastated. I was like, oh my gosh. And so he's like, well, you can bring her down tomorrow and I can look at her in between surgeries or just wait to your uh, follow-up appointment. We went ahead and just waited to her follow-up appointment. He was devastated. I mean, he, he was very, very sad that um, it had opened and he looked at it and he's like, well, it did open. And he's like, and you knew that. I was like, yeah. He goes, well, at this rate, all we can do is see if it will close back on its own. If it doesn't in a year, we'll go back in and we'll go back into surgery and we'll fix it. So we were kind of at a standstill. We were like, okay, so it didn't work completely, but it worked. And after talking with him about it, he the only thing he can think of is the dissolvable stitches just came undone sooner than they usually do for whatever reason. And that's what caused it to open. It kind of, it was what it was. We couldn't fix it and we just had to go with it. And so we did. So she had that going on. She um, grew up with having that closure. We didn't have to use her fake palette anymore, you could say. That mm -hmm. got to go in that little baggie and mm -hmm. go put be put in her baby box. One of the things with Aubrey, too, 
is because of all these surgeries that she'd been having in her short little time being born, um, she didn't start crawling until she was about 12 months old. So that's when she finally hit that milestone was about 12 months old. So right around the time she had her palate surgery, she started crawling. She didn't really start walking until she was about 18 months old. So after she started walking and doing all that fun stuff, um, when she was two years old, we went back and had an appointment with the team, her craniofacial team, and we got to see our surgeon again. And he looked at her because we was you know, back to that whole palate thing. Did it close on its own or not type of thing? It tried to. It, tr it, it almost closed completely on its own, but it didn't. It left just a tiny, tiny like opening, like mm -hmm. a sliver, just itty bitty was still up in the top of her mouth. So he was like, you know, I really don't want to, you know, put her back into surgery just for that tiny little thing. He's like, I think we can fix that when we're doing another surgery. And he's like, as long as you guys are okay with that and she can handle things the way it is, we're gonna leave it be. So from the time she basically had that reopening after surgery, she had a tiny, tiny little hole in the top of her mouth. Every once in a while you would see something come through her nose. Um, and usually it was just, I won't say it was like if she ate M&Ms, like a coloring from an M&M might come through her nose or something. But it wasn't like something all the time. It was just every once in a while something just hit the spot just right and it would come through. So it wasn't a big deal. Besides that palate reopening and almost closing on its own, one of the biggest blessings mm -hmm. Aubrey probably had during this whole thing was what? No tubes in my ears. No tubes in her ears. So Whoop. one of the things that's pretty common with um, cleft palate babies is ear infections and then having to have tubes put in. And this one never had an ear infection when she was a baby. Never. Nope. Um, doctors were like, Are serious? There's no tubes? We could have an appointment. And they're like, tubes in? Nope. She doesn't have tubes? No. She never had an ear infection. Mm -hmm. And so that was huge. I mean, the other thing is, is her hearing was off the chart. Mm -hmm. So we always joke with her that we know she can hear us. She just chooses <laughs> not to listen to us. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and it's still like that today. But yeah, she didn't have to have any tubes. And so her first ear infection she ever got was when? When I was five. When she was five. She was a kindergartner. And yeah. she had it. It started one month and we cleared it up and it came back the next month and we cleared it up and it came back the next month and cleared it up. I mean, it was to the point where our doctor was like, if she gets it again, you're going to have to go see a specialist because I'm not sure why she's getting them. But it never did. It never came mm -hmm. back after that third month in a row. Nope. So she had her bout with the ear infection, but you know, she... Um, Never complained, really. Oh. I mean, she did have one other ear infection two years ago. But that's just because you were swimming too much. Yeah. But no big deal, because that one was something different. The other thing that we had to start was speech. Yep. So she started seeing a speech therapist when she was three, three years three. old. The local speech therapist would collaborate with our speech therapist that was on her craniofacial team which was so, so helpful. They could communicate through email or you know phone calls and be on the same page working with making sure she was making the correct sounds. Now she's had, I should say, she's not in services right now, but no. she did have several different therapists that she worked with. And yeah. with speech therapy, it's just kind of a common thing um, to have. But now that hers is basically at a point where it's a structural thing, there's hope that after everything's done this summer and we check things out, speech will be good. As you can tell, there's still way more to this girl's story. Uh. We hope that you guys will continue to come back and check often to see when we put up part four. Part four. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email us at serialbarnstories at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.